Oh, hello there, yes. Well, I'm just wondering if we're going to get our promised heat wave today. Anything above 10 will be welcome at the moment. Anyway, yes, the stunning news or non news yesterday was um, once again Labour's continuing capitulation to actually do anything to improve people's lives. There was a very long time ago, if you may dimly recall, there was a very long time ago when the Labour Party had what one might call an industrial strategy. And it was the idea that we should collectively, as a nation, become richer. I think that's just going to go. The various pledges on improving workers' rights undoubtedly will be ditched. And we will be left with a whole hardcore series of things that they're going to do for the rich. Because everybody knows that the rich need to be pampered in this country. They simply haven't had it easy enough for long enough. And um, <laughs> the absolute, you know, sort of mindless, non-economic stuff that we uh, don't have, if I can put it that way, in this country was very much on show yesterday. I was uh, unfortunately drawn to draw <laughs> read Janet Daly's latest piece in The Telegraph, which I think neatly encapsulates the level of absolute tosh that he's written. So, Tory capitulation to the soft left orthodoxy has ruined Britain. Don't blame reform. Soon next party is unravelling because it's succumbed to socialist delusions that were impossible to implement. Yes, because Janet is, you know, one of that uh, group of their political class commentators who magically believes that somehow we're still living in 1760 where Adam Smith is right. That the whole past 200 years of capitalist and state expansion in terms of running the economy magically don't work in the slightest, even though we have historical periods after the Second World War when magically they did. But of course, in her world, that's not right, because the one thing you mustn't do is have a government that does anything, because big business does everything, doesn't it? And the, you know, the fruits of all of that we can see around us. So let's have a look at just a, just a snippet of what she said. Even if there were infinite amounts of money available, which there can be if you just keep printing it, I mean, there's the old, oh, with Weimar Germany argument, which... Again, um, think about back to 2008 and the banking crisis. Think back to COVID and the, well, COVID crisis printed a hell of a lot of money. And it's not a problem, is it, Janet? The problem comes when that money is simply given to rich people to do nothing with. And you end up with a very dysfunctional economy. But Janet doesn't know that. Janet is still obsessed with pin making and the hidden hand because obviously... That's what works, yeah? Anyway, there is a problem with democratic socialist programmes. And what she means by that is the state intervening in profit making, yeah? I mean, we can, again, see, you know, Britain's railways, the post office, the water, the, 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 everything. The way that everything doesn't work here. Yeah. And it's not the fault of the businesses involved who are simply, you know, profit skimming as much as they can do. No, no. The fault is that the state has something, something, something bad. Yes, the state is not good at running services that require efficiency and responsiveness to change. Well, OK, but can Janet point me to one of the state's monopolies yeah, which are now in private hands, that does that. I fully appreciate that if you want to run something at a low level, which is going to be very efficient, then, you know, you allow market forces to work. That's the whole point of market forces. They do work at that sort of level, but they don't work at the level of state monopoly. And perhaps if Janet could reread Adam Smith, she'd realise that about two thirds of the wealth of nations points that out. Anyway, <laughs> commitment to the consumer's preferences, value for money, an interest in constant innovation, an appetite for progress. Yes, indeed. But you see, Janet, the problem is that we've given vast amounts of money to the rich with the idea that they would do all of those things, and for the last 40 years they haven't. But your argument appears to be that magically we haven't done that, but if maybe we just gave them an awful lot more money, they would deliver. I'm not entirely convinced because, I mean, you know, in the real world, of course, you know, we have the, the governor of the Bank of England suggesting that we're all paid too much. Now, 
I'm sure you've realised looking around you how 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 problematic it is that people are too rich at the moment. It's again the reason why everything works, isn't it? Yes, you get a bunch of people that agree with <laughs> Daily Telegraph leader writers in charge of the Bank of England to just kind of make up stupid fiscal rules as they go along, and that's what you get. And you also get a bunch of people who are hijacked the only opportunities um, for social change in this country in terms of taking over the Labour Party, and you get exactly the same thing, don't you? So we're not going to talk about economics at this election because the Labour Party are going to do everything they can to avoid doing it, which neatly brings us to an election about racism. Oh, there's too many brown people here. There's going to be a lot more brown people here in the near future. That'll be the election. Thrilling, 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 thrilling thrilling anyway do have a lovely beginning to the weekend if you can do i can't believe the fact that these people that claim to know things have actually never actually read most of the things they claim to know about it's astounding anyway do have a lovely one if you can whilst you can